Kick to begin the game. And the Dolphins are going to recover. The risk reward of the onside kick. When you don't get it, the risk comes out to play. And here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them. And field position leads you to that type of play calling. And whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, now that they've given up that type of field position, the advantage has switched to their opponent. They faked the handoff. Now Tua. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. A try to tiptoe the pylon, but they're going to say he stepped out at the one-yard line. A huge play there right off the bat, and even 50 yards. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Mostert will score. Touchdown, Miami. So the big play to kick off the drive set them up first and goal, and they're able to cash in right away on play number two. I think I'm starting to understand more and more when we get ready to do games and we meet with coaches, why they talk about big plays, explosive plays, and how it sets them up for success, because that's exactly how they're able to score on this one. We saw the touchdown. We saw the payoff. But, of course, that big, long chunk play is what got them in position. Jason Sanders. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. From his end zone, Isaiah McKenzie. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. now with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Second and eight coming from the 19. Allen rolling to his right. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. As quarterbacks like to do, he pushed it downfield on that throw. But I think that since he was outside the pocket and there was open space, it would have been a good time for his first carry of the game. And he will not make it to that imaginary yellow line as they get him to the ground at about the 23. A gain of four, not enough. And it looks like punt time on their opening drive as it's fourth down. They do go for it. Here's Allen. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he is going to have the Bills first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. Fourth down conversion plays. You usually think one, two, three yards, maybe ten. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Escaping the pressure right. He'll find Diggs once more on the completion. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. On first down, Allen flush to his right. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. Touchdown, Bills. Tommy Sweeney. 36 yards, and the Bills are able to match the opening drive touchdown against them with one of their own. And now Sean McDermott's made the call. They'll go for two. Allen will try to throw for it. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. So what do you think the mindset was there? You can tie it with a PAT here first half. Why go for the lead right now? The old school mindset says if you have a better team, you just go ahead and continue to try and dominate. There's also a school of thought if you don't think you're quite as good, you have to try and take advantage of opportunities. And finally, I just think this is analytics coming into the game. Someone saying the more you go for two, the better your chances are of actually getting them. So they'll accept that penalty, and that'll, of course, move the football up the field. Let's go now. 
Setting to throw on first down is Tua, eluding the pressure right. Will swing complete to Jalen Waddle. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Throwing now is Tungavailoa. He's down inside the 10 to the 8. And it comes on a gain of 8. Ball on the 8, second and 2. Two are going to throw. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensive. Touchdown, Dolphins! Mike Gesicki on the pass from Tua Tungavailoa as his guys are able to extend their lead. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like, based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. So now the Dolphin offense will stay out there as they'll go for two. It's a run with Mostert, and he will get into the end zone, and it's now a two-score game as the lead moves to nine. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. McKenzie now from his end zone. Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. And he's going to take this all the way down inside the 40. But when the highlight is shown of this play, all attention is going to be on the person running with the football. But how about the group as a whole setting up that big-time return? Yardage that we won't even account for in the box score may help them win the game. Oh, Allen cannot get away, and down he goes. Well, they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Forced out to his left. Now he's going to let it go deep left side. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Javon Holland. And the Dolphins are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. So for this offense, Charles, remember, drive one made it to the end zone. Drive two resulted in a touchdown as well. Now they'll try to make it three for three. Yeah, and you know, they told us all week that this was the plan and this is what they wanted to execute. But did they really believe it would happen this well, this efficiently? I know they'll take it. And afterwards, they'll say, there was never a doubt in our minds we were going to be successful in this one. On second and seven, Tua, he'll swing this out to Mostert. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Here's Tua. That's complete to Mostert out of the backfield. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense. Good tackle. Oh, he's got some breathing. And now off to the races, down the right side. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Durham Smythe, 48 yards. And the Dolphins' decision to go for it pays off with six points. 
It's a run with Mostert. And he will get into the end zone to bump the lead up to three scores. Only had a couple of yards to gain there on the two-point conversion, and they were able to do it. And how many teams shy away from running the football on the two-point conversion? They treat two yards as if it were 20. If you're a good team running the ball, go to your strength. Go ahead and push it into the end zone. Yeah, they did. It worked. And he'll wind up getting a couple extra yards here for his trouble to bring it out of the end zone as he's down at the 27. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. As the offense comes out here, Charles, uh, maybe perhaps a bit more of a focus on the run game for this drive after tossing an interception on the previous one. I think that's a good way to look at it and a good way to think about it, but maybe they get to it in a little bit different way because after you throw an interception, you want to make sure you keep your quarterback's confidence high. So maybe give him a couple easy throws that he can complete and then get to the running game and try and get things settled down. And still in the first half here, a long way to go. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. Another big play as they get 28 out of that one. First down, here's the run with Cook. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. They run the counter with Cook, and this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. He completes it to the tight end, Knox. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They'll try the middle with Cook. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Allen going to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Play of the drive forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Now Allen. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked up by Javon Holland. And the Dolphins are going to take over here on the INT at their own five-yard line. Parker, there's no other way you could describe it because that was absolutely just gut-wrenching for that offense. They were right on the precipice. Points were available. All they had to do was just fall forward, and they were going to put them up on the board. Instead, a long drive ends in heartbreak and a melancholy trip back to the drawing board. How you like it when I go a little bit lyrical for you? Flushed out right. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. Back near his goal line, here's Tua. That swung out to Mostert. And he'll be out of bounds right at about the 10-yard line. Five yards, now it's third and five. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. And going deep for Hill. It got his man complete. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. And going deep for Hill. And that is incomplete. He certainly had a good game throwing the ball so far, but I think he was trying to take that from good to great with that throw, trying to get one downfield. Throwing again on second and 10. Tua 